Good evening everybody. Thank you very much for joining in. This side Rahul Mogan here working as a Chief Executive Officer of Treasury Consulting LLP which is a limited liability partnership firm incorporated in India. And as you under, as you very well understand that we are having our YouTube channel and this YouTube channel is giving you multiple videos on the very very fresh topics which we have across the which we have across the globe. In that regards today we are giving you a very very fresh topic which is fed off and fed on actually from where we are coming up with this topic is from the word which is risk off and risk on we very well understand that nowadays there is a lot of volatility which is happening in the financial markets you see japanese yen you see any currency volatility is bound to happen and all central banks are grappling with the with the with the volatility at the faster pace but unfortunately sometimes they able to do so sometimes they won't be able to do so so over the period what did happen especially in the last few months you know uh, not not few months in the last few few week that when janet yellen said that she is going to increase the interest rate you know a lot of market participants started thinking that she will increase an interest rate in september 2018 but technically this is not the case Janet Yellen is not in a position to increase the interest rate before December. In fact, if we carefully see and we check it out, the Morgan Stanley, then Morgan Stanley and there are a lot of other banks which are still claiming that the Yellen is not in a position even to increase the interest rate even till December. Probably U.S. banks are in the position to increase the interest rate somewhere in next year, which is 2017. and they themselves not sure that exactly what would be the scene uh, you know uh, whether yellen would be able to do this or not do this so and so forth but nonetheless we are not here for that so what did happen what did happen over the period especially in the last two weeks a very new word that came up which is uh, which has replaced a very 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 well known word in the financial markets risk off and risk off with fed on and fed off it means if the fed will increase an in interest rate everything would be good if the fed won't increase won't increase the interest rate things may not be good so this is something which is technically not correct so today video will speak about that what do you mean by fed on and what do you mean by fed off but before initiating the video we would like to tell you that you are uh, right now with the treasury consulting llp which is a limited liability partnership firm in corporate in, in india and i myself is acting as a chief executive officer at the same time i am acting as a country director of two international firm which is uh, international institute of certified forensic investigation professionals and association of certified for forensic uh, certified forensic uh, accounting professionals ac association of certified forensic accounting professionals acfp now moving forward to the topic this is very important slide lot of people saying that the dollar strength is going on lot of people saying that you were in a position to increase the interest rate to an extent sometimes you agree sometimes you sometimes you do not agree but i strongly feel that us is not in a position to increase the interest rate sitting today which is at least before 2017 the reason is very simple because we need to understand that yes i appreciate the fact that today if australia is offering 1.5% us is the only country which is offering 0.5%. Yes of course we need to ignore the Indonesia which is offering 7.7%. We need to we need to ignore the uh we need to ignore the Singapore which is offering roughly uh, I think 1.3% and others. But these both are positive countries. Cause positive countries means positive countries means they are offering positive carry. Now if US will hide the will if US will increase the interest rate then this would be very good for uh, this would be this would be very good for uh, for the investors because money will not float up float out of us because if today interest rate is 0.25 0.5% and say assuming if jaren yellen is correct and in september she would increase an interest rate by 25 bps so it will go to 0.75 and suppose in in december she would further increase by 25 bps then it then it will go to 1% now 1% would be very good so we may not face risk off and risk off rather rather you know you are going to see a lot of money which would continue to be in the us so the money which is chasing the world for carry this will not chase so and i and i strongly doubt that the money which is flowing to singapore 
to an extent indonesia to an extent us to an extent uh, you know i would say uh, you are australia uh, these money will not flow so the carry trade will dry up but at the same time we need to understand that there is a lot of complexity which is before united states to increase in interest rate number one complexity is us national debt unfortunately the media today is myopic in nature us federal federal debt is sitting approximately 29 trillion dollars and this is growing at a very fast pace and to be very honest don't take me otherwise but there are a lot of people who still have a lot of doubts about the credibility of the number which majority of the governments are generating example government of india is saying that they are growing by 7.1% i strongly feel that i strongly doubt whether india is growing by 7.1% us government is saying they are they are growing by 2.2% i doubt they are grow, growing by 2.2% europe on the other side is saying that they are grow, growing going uh, growing by less than 1% we can trust on them because we can expect that the entire europe which is the block of 29 nations assume we will take uh, you know your so called uh, uh britain as well so they may grow at the rate of uh, you know uh, i would say 1% but at the same time we need to understand that today the data which is supplied is not correct now before moving ahead because majority of the people talking about the federal wave federal raise but we talk about the us national debt and i strongly feel that the debt figure which is given up by the us is absolutely incorrect now i would like to link this with an example of the tokyo like today i was uh, listening to the bloomberg tv and i got to know that uh, bank of japan basically the difference there is a there is a difference of 80 billion dollar 80 billion 80 80 billion dollar between bank of japan and central government of tokyo oh, sorry central government of japan so the total debt accumulated by japan minus the same figures which bank of which central bank of government central government is having there is a difference of more than 80 billion dollars now the question is very simple from where this difference is coming this difference should not come because if they, if there if this difference is coming then there is going to be an issue there is going to be an issue because the number should be same similarly today us is saying they have 29 trillion dollars of the national debt i doubt I strongly doubt that US is having 29 trillion dollar of a national debt in my view the debt is more than uh, I think it is more than 40 to 50, more than 40 trillion dollars at the same time I would like to add stress on the fact that the one which is debt to GDP ratio we all understand that debt to GDP ratio the computation methodology of the debt to GDP ratio is not correct for majority of the people across the globe like we had posted our video also wherein we showed that the debt to debt that the way you are calculating the debt to debt to gdp ratio is not correct vis-a-vis you should calculate so this is one way unfortunately we all understand that the media is myopic in nature nobody is thinking in in that direction and people really are not interested in uh, not bothered about uh, how people are calculating the interest rate you know and so and so forth second problem is the safe haven Yes I absolutely as a corporate treasurer I absolutely agree with the fact that uh, dollar is a safe haven currency but at the same time I'm strongly deny the fact that dollar is the only safe haven currency because dollar today turned out to be the safe haven currency only because euro is not been able to perform well CHF which is Swiss franc is not in a good shape and Swiss franc is anyways is is, is an American ally we all very well understand that Swiss franc is an American ally. Last but not the least, China is not doing very well. But if we go with the Bloomberg TV, if we go with the latest latest reports, then China is doing reasonably well. And as we very well understand that, if sitting sitting today, which is first September 2016, then first October 2016, Chinese yuan would be a part of SDR. SDR stands for Special Drawing Rights. So if Chinese yuan once, which is 30 days from now, plus minus 2 3 days when chinese yuan would turn out to be a part of sdr then it would going going to be very good because this will give give a very good status to chinese yuan and after all the chinese yuan would be an official reserve currency of, of the world so i am not a very strong believer of the fact that the dollar is the only safe haven across the globe i strongly believe that there are multiple countries also who are the safe haven across the globe but at the same time we need to appreciate the fact that these countries are not growing good example euro is in is in a mess 
your so called uh, you know i would say uh, swiss franc is in a mess not to mention anything about japanese yen because japanese yen is not in a mess it is in a very bad shape right now and i'm not sure that whether helicopter money would be able to save them or not there are a lot of talks which are happening in fact i also read in the media that bank of japan which is doing the direct debt monetization bank of japan is is dropping few drops on the tokyo i'm not talking about any rain i'm saying they are dropping something which is known as uh, helicopter drops so what they are doing exactly and what they are planning to do is that bank of japan is slowly slowly trying to revive the economy and the last thing which is qe and if we carefully see that few days ago the central the governor of the central bank of japan kuroda he clearly said that japanese in tokyo there is still a room for qe i myself fail to understand that how kuroda can say in, in an international media that there is still a room for qe because the question is very clear because the question is very clear you are doing the quantitative easing for the last 20 years and you tried everything in fact you not did quantitative easing you tried qqe qualitative quantitative easing but unfortunately you failed so how can you say that there is still a room for a quantitative easing last chinese yuan is joining sdr and i am very felt sure that on purchasing power parity term china is number 1 economy of the world even bypassing united states and in terms of the gdp gdp figure china is second largest economy of the world which is if i'm not wrong roughly 13 trillion dollars or so chinese are growing very fast dim sum bonds are growing very fast cnh is going very fast which is offshore yuan it's it's going very fast at the same time i hope you heard about the news that uh, in the last uh, one or two weeks chinese open up the you know the stream between uh, you are shenzhen and uh, they opened the shenzhen shenzhen and hong kong and if this would continue that chinese would get at least uh, i would say if i'm not wrong bloomberg tv was suggesting that they would get somewhere 5.6 trillion dollar of a of a pre income uh, of uh, the dollar income which will come to china and if you go with the bloomberg tv that chinese are dumping us treasuries at a very fast pace yes absolutely i would agree with the thought thought that sitting today us treasuries is one 10 year us treasury is approximately 1.52% there is no doubt about that but at the same time we need to understand that there are a lot of other countries who are offering positive interest rate yes you need to understand that they are not defaulted economies so in nutshell dollar is not the only safe haven currency across the globe I absolutely agree with the thought that there are a lot of people, hedge funds, bureaucrats, non-banking financial corporation, financial institution, who continue to believe that dollar is dollar would act as a reserve currency of the world. Yes, we need to see and we need to watch, but I strongly doubt that in September, uh, Federal Reserve would be able to increase the interest rate, and even by December. Before moving ahead, we would like to stress one fact that uh, yesterday, Bill Gross. uh bill gross who is the founder mem- founding member of uh, pinco he gave an interview to bloomberg tv where he suggested that federal reserve should increase interest rate in september and one tranche somewhere in december so by the time 2017 would come the us would have at least 1% of interest rate bill also suggest- bill also suggested that if the entire globe or the majority of the developed economy would continue to move continue to have negative interest rate then all liabilities sorry all the set would convert into liabilities and we all understand that companies like bill pinco or the current company of bill gross which is jn capital they all managing a lot of assets so we need to understand that negative interest rate do not work in fact yesterday i was uh, listening to bloomberg tv and bloomberg tv was suggesting that i am not sure because i have not read anywhere but bloomberg tv watch was suggesting that even doshi has started asking its client doshi has started asking his clients to have a negative collateral negative collateral which means the money which these people are uh, big have wealthy people are giving to doshi it is subject to a negative collateral so something or not it's not happening that is why we had given uh, the hint that fed on and fed off because across the globe there is only one one institution which is running which is federal reserve yes we strongly appreciate the fact that china uh, people bank of china is having a strong capacity to lead lead it but absolutely they need some time because they are shifting from the consumption based economy 
or the merchandise based economy to the knowledge based economy and absolutely that need lot lots of money and chinese are uh, doing that moving ahead this is very important nowadays today the safe haven currency is nothing but a currency the safe haven currencies are those those currencies wherein the investors wherein the investors would like to invest at as their investment tend to be safe it is a belief i don't think that us is a safe currency even if i go with the data of america they have 15 trillion dollars of a gdp and the direct i would say a debt of 29 trillion dollars implicit guarantees and other debt monetization if we add then this amount is extremely pretty big nobody knows how much how big is uh, how big is that about sitting today which is 1st september 2016 usd uh, there are multiple uh, you know uh, the reserve currencies one is dollar one is uh, norwegian krona nok one is pound sterling one is euro one is yen one is swiss franc and one is chinese yuan why rot chinese yuan because first september 2016 yuan is joining the sdr league if we carefully see then it is a list of the sdr it is a list of the it is a list of the sdr whereby we are having it is a list of the sdr whereby we are having six currencies and they are quoted in in 15 denominations so when you have a 15 denomination means you have you would have overnight spot spot next to one to 12 months so if you multiply 6 into 15 so you would have 90 you know uh, you would have 90 you would have 90 denominations which is known as libor but after chinese yuan it going to be seven because one more currency is joining effective first october chinese yuan is joining in that regard trader central bank sovereign wealth fund shortly known as swf pension funds would love would of course increase their yuan exposure i am not saying i am not saying that yuan would uh, be the most volatile currency because we need to appreciate the fact that people bank of china still hold 3.2 billion dollar of foreign exchange reserve so china is still highly capitalized and people bank of china still hold lot of capacity to mitigate the volatility in the chinese yuan but unfortunately people tend to believe lot of people tend to believe that you know uh, it's a uh, economy like china which is uh, at 13 trillion dollar they should continue to grow at uh, at the rate of 8 trillion dollar i absolutely disagree with the thought because if an economy of a 12 trillion dollars is growing by even 4% then they are growing much better than the economy who is growing nothing who is who is who is who is growing nothing and if you move further uh, before moving further because we are going to show you some charts but i would like to tell you something well in well in advance in that regards that these are the charts which were taken from uh, from the public domain research report so treasury consulting llp holds no responsibility uh, whether these charts are uh, are authenticated in nature or not but we checked it out and we got to know that these charts are uh, very well authenticated in nature so not a point now moving further now this chart is very very interesting if you carefully see this chart then us dollar is having a yield this is a 10 year us dollar uh, sorry my mistake this is 10 year uh, treasury yield chart the 10 year treasury yield chart us dollar is approximately uh, 1.5% or so and uh, you very well understand where euro area stands and where tokyo and all will stands germany is almost zero and tokyo is uh, almost uh, zero which is 0.3 so us is the only economy which is offering on the 10 year which is approximately 1.5% but at the same time we also need to appreciate one fact that if if us we also need to appreciate one fact that if us would increase interest rate from here then i am pretty sure that a huge amount of money will enter into us and i may not be surprised that if us will increase an in interest rate here then probably the tower probably we will shift the capital flight now what do you mean by capital flight what i mean to say that money will flow from emerging market to us i may not be surprised that is something which which uh, we sincerely need to check because us 10 year is offering 1.52% which is highest of course we need to ignore uh, indonesia and others moving on the next chart this is very interesting chart if we see that the yield curve on the german bond market 
31st December 2015, the German 10 years yield was approximately 0.4 and sitting today it is negative. You tell me central bank which is going positive. Tokyo is in negative, German is in negative, I think France is in negative, Switzerland is in, is in, is in negative, Europe is in negative. I doubt that Bank of Japan would be able to increase uh, interest rate, uh, uh, Bank of Java, sorry, a, uh, Bank of England would be able to increase interest rate in the uh, near term. And when it comes to the Tokyo, Tokyo, Tokyo is in a mess. So few things which we need to consider very, very sincerely that yes, the upcoming time is fed on and fed off because lot would be dependent upon Federal Reserve. And I strongly feel that Federal Reserve, if not increase interest rate, in 2016 but will surely increase interest rate at least by 50 bips in 2017 and my dear friends sincerely speaking if this would happen this would be a catastrophe for the developing economy especially like india because money will start flowing out of india because here sitting in us i'm getting one percent and you all understand that indian economies if the economy like india are following accommodative monetary policy. In accommodative monetary policy, what you are doing, you are trying to reduce the interest rate to stimulate the economy. You are trying to decrease the interest rate in your system, which I strongly doubt whether this would work or not. At the same time, the threat would, would always come on Australia because uh, their overnight rate was 2.5%, which did which did decrease to which did uh, decrease to 1.5%. But at the same time, we should not forget that Australia is still 1.5% plus. And India is having a lot of pressure wherein they are asked to reduce the interest rate from present which is 6.5% and, and I strongly believe that the next governor which is Ur Urjit Patel will decrease interest rate uh, by at least 100 basis point if not in 2016 then somewhere in uh, 2017. So interest rate are bound to decrease. In nutshell if we summarize this video we are making sense that the world is revolving around Fed because people don't want to trust on People Bank of China, but Treasury Consultant and LLP is strongly believing in China. We strongly believe that uh, China will surely come forward, and after all, we should not discount the fact that the China is the second largest economy of the world. At the same time, we should not forget the fact that effective 1st October, they are joining the SDR. So if they are joining the SDR, their currency would obviously be the you know uh, reserve currency of the world. Yes, the world would continue to revolve around Federal Reserve, and uh, because uh, easily nobody wanted to appreciate the fact that uh, the China is growing. Nobody wanted to appreciate the fact that uh, the things are changing. People still want to have a uh, habit that uh, the world will continue to move towards uh, move towards US. So with this, we wanted uh, to give you a small introduction about FedOn and uh, FedOff. There are a lot of other videos on the way. I hope you like this video. You are most welcome to contact us uh, and in uh, most welcome to contact Treasury Consulting LLP. As you understand that we are having a brand which is Foreign Exchange Basic Thinkers. So this brand is uh, everywhere. If you see we are on Dailymotion, we are on Dropbox, we are on LinkedIn, we are on Skype, Google Groups, SlideShare, WeChat, Snapchat, uh, you know, WhatsApp, Telegram, Facebook, YouTube. We are everywhere and we are strongly growing. Uh, we are serving millions of members every day and we hope we, we will serve several several millions members very soon. And if we go by then uh, our clients, our clients are banks, financial institutions, corporate, educational institutions and growing. Today we are doing business uh, in entire Asia and I hope uh, by 2017 we will, uh, we will cross the Europe. With this, uh, we thank you very much. To, we will we'll thank you very much to you and uh, at the same time we wish you all the best for your trading but before winding up this video we would like to stress one fact very clearly that 2017 won't be very easy for the trading because effective first October Yon is joining SDR and you will see a lot of volatility which would happen and after all we should not forget the word which has given in the oil market that at 50 it is strict it is 50 it is strict sell if in the next five years oil will continue to maintain a resistance of 50 then i strongly doubt that whether other economies would be able to perform especially the opec reason organization of petroleum exporting countries so that is something a lot of uh, bad news on the way but nonetheless we thank you very much for your time and uh, for your patience
for uh, listening us there are a lot of other videos which are on the way which we are coming like our upcoming video would be on the Deutsche Bank scandal and one video which we are uploading this would be cover the wing trade of uh, which would be covering the wing trade thank you and uh, have a nice time thank you